Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be painting up some Hearthguard Berserkers from the Fire Slayers from Age of Sigmar. And now they are assembled up to the point where they would get in the way of painting. More specifically, their heads are not attached because I would not be able to paint the heads, their beards more specifically effectively with their weapons and armor in the way. So with that out of the way, we're going to prime them with gray, uh, with bright touch gray car primer. And then once that is done, we're going to take their heads and take some uh, toothpicks and some blue tack and attach them like so. And basically they're going to be heads on pikes so I can easily paint elsewhere. Now we're going to do the undercoating with Pallid Witch Flesh, White Scar White, and Coella Green Shade. We are going to paint the undercoat. We're going to start off with Pallid Witch Flesh through the airbrush at a 45 degree angle down. And we're just going to apply this white. Then we're going to take White Scar and we're going to dry brush all over the model. This is going to pick out the edges, the more raised areas and stuff, and add a very bright white to them. And a good transition or sharp lines depending on whatever the part of the body is. And then with Quella Green Shade, Quella Green Shade is actually a bluish green. And I'm going to use this, spray this with an airbrush from the bottom to add some depth and shadow into it. Uh, probably should have used a more pure blue. This is a greenish blue. Uh, but, yeah, it works. Now with a one-to-one -one mix of Jokero Orange and Lamian Medium with just a little bit of water to help it run better, we're going to apply this all over the flesh and the faces that are on the helmets. And with this thin layer we'll be able to see the undercoating, the uh, Coella Green Shade, and so it's already going to be pretty much highlighted and such. Now we're going to try something. With Cadmium Red, uh, dilute a little bit with Mineral Spirits to make it flow better. It's not a wash. We're going to just paint this all over the flesh. This is more of a risk. So I wanted them to have more of a, a red hue into them because these Hearthguard Berserkers are special. They're super tanky, infused with magic and all that stuff. So I wanted them to be redder flesh. And so I apply this all over and then I wipe it away with... Uh, sponges and I use kind of a dirtyish one for the overall remove the most and then I use cleaner ones to go over the more raised areas to highlight because if it's dirty it'll spread the color it'll remove some but it'll leave a little bit so cleaner sponges will help remove more and so this created somewhat of a nice highlight here and there and this this was an experiment I could have probably done a, a wash of the cadmium and I could have directly applied it into recesses but this with the sponges created sort of a color transition and eh, it's an interesting effect. Now, however, the color was probably a little too much, or it, it wasn't bright enough. I needed more highlighting. And so I went back with Jokero Orange, uh, watered down slightly, and I'm just going to apply it onto the most raised areas. Something like that, as a highlight on some parts of the muscle and stuff. Alright, so with Wild Rider Red, Troll Slayer Orange, and Oil Paint Magenta, we're going to paint these like loincloths that they have. So we're going to start off with Wild Rider Red as the base layer. And then what we're going to do with Troll Slayer Orange is, we're not really going to highlight. What we're going to do is we're going to paint like lines on the most raised areas or stuff. This is more of like a general thing. Uh, painting lines here and there, uh, it depends. And then what we're going to do is going to take the magenta as a wash, diluted with mineral spirits, and then we're just going to apply it twice on there because uh, it was a little too thin. And then we're not going to remove anything, we're not going to scrape any away, we're just going to leave it as is. And this, uh, the magenta add will add the depth, and the colors underneath will seem to be vibrant.
And now with only the red, ignore the other colors, I never used them. So the idea was for the beard. I was going to paint the beard and I'm going to apply the red. And so the thing is though, when I went to apply the orange and stuff, it's supposed to be sort of like a highlights and I wanted to use the orange and it would blend well. The problem is there has, uh, these are like strands of hair. It's not like a sheet of metal. And so when I tried to paint it on, I'd have to use a lot of force and basically it would get into the recesses, which I don't need. And so using oil colors for this was a failure. And so I took probably like a day break because it takes forever for the hair to dry or oil paints to dry. And so once that's done, I switched back to acrylics to finish the job because that would actually work. And now with Troll Slayer Orange and Uriel Yellow, we're going to paint the, well, the rest of the hair. <laughs> and beards. So with Troll Slayer Orange, I'm not going to do a dry brush, I'm going to do an overbrush, which is close to a dry brush. And it's going to go over the hair. So this actually took quite a while, a little too long. I mean, if I, well, that's because there's like 60 Volkites in the background waiting to be painted, so... Ugh. And then I use Uriel Yellow as a lighter overbrush on the most raised areas of the hair and the tips of the hair. And with AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish, I use that with an airbrush to, well, varnish and seal all the uh, models because all the non-metals have been painted up to this point. All right, now with Iron Warrior, Iron Hand Steel, and Iron Breaker, we're gonna paint the metals. I painted the uh, their weapons with Iron Warrior, yeah, and their throwing axes as well. However, I did not paint their uh, metal jewelry, uh, waistband, and other metallic trinkets uh, with this, which was a mistake, or their helmets, because uh, the Iron Warrior added a good dark metal, and I screwed up and started their base color with Iron Hand Steel, and it didn't work out too well. So I recommend coating all the metal, starting with this dark Iron Warrior, then highlighting with Iron Hand Steel. But I started with Iron Hand Steel on everything but the weapons. As far as the weapons, I used it as a highlight, painting the more raised areas on the weapons towards the light, as well as painting the entire blade of each axe with Iron Hand Steel. And then with Iron Breaker, I applied it onto the most raised areas of each metal trinket, and the edges of the blade, and a light sort of dry brushing on some parts of the axes, the most raised areas. But I should have started with the Iron Warriors, and as well as the helmets as well, because it just didn't look right. And now with Brass Scorpion and Retributor Armor, I'm going to paint the brass stuff. So we start with the base layer of Brass Scorpion as the base. Now, for some reason, I forgot to actually get footage of the Retributor Armor stuff. So basically, everything that was going to be brass, including their helmets and these lines and stuff on the helmets, are going to be with Brass Scorpion. And they have a certain level of trinkets that are scattered throughout some on the axes. Some of them have it in their beards and such and such. And so... I'm going to start with the Betty Slayer Brass Scorpion, and then we're going to go with the Retributor Armor and apply it to their crests on their heads, as well as the trinkets and stuff. Basically, we're covering 80 to 90% of whatever we covered with Brass Scorpion with the Retributor Armor, and we're painting the lines and filigree on the helmets and their stomach bands.
All right, the medals look terrible simply because uh, the medals that did not start off with the Iron Warriors look terrible. So I'm going to use Null Noil. I'm going to apply it to the helmets and to the metal pieces that did not start off with uh, Iron Warrior. The weapons, I'm not going to bother. They're fine. And so I'm going to apply this straight from the pot on all the metal trinkets and such and their helmets as well. I don't want it to pull at all. I just want it to get into the recesses to add depth. Alright, now here's a blast from the past. I'm bringing out the big guns and the really hard to open containers. So with Vallejo Liquid Copper, Liquid Gold Old Gold, and Liquid Gold Gold, I'm going to paint the... I don't know what these are, but they, they like apply ruins into their flesh. Runes into their flesh. So I'm going to start off with a base layer of Liquid Copper as the base. They're scattered all throughout. Then I'm going to go with Old Gold to cover like pretty much everything that we just painted with Liquid Copper. And then with the gold color, I'm going to apply it to half to a third of each of the runes that's closest to the light, essentially. And it looks good. It has a very good shine. These are special paints. And they have a great metallic sheen. And so now, with pretty much it's all done, I'm going to take some super glue and glue them to their bases, which are done by my brother as it is his army. And I don't know how to make these bases, he does. He said he used the Games Workshop uh, Cracked Earth Lava Base tutorial, but clearly these are slightly different. They look better, I think. And also I would like to note that uh, I could not seem to figure out how to get the head on right for one guy. This is the last guy I'm showing you, uh, the last guy I was going to assemble. I already assembled the other four. And the thing is he could not fit. And I looked at the instructions and there was like nothing for this guy in particular. There's no reason why he couldn't fit, but they didn't even have instructions instructions for him to get in and so watch me basically break the thing apart on accident and uh, well I'm gonna skip to the part where I found a way to fix it by cutting one of their beards and transplanting a head to a different body and done this project would have been done a lot sooner but a bunch of other things IRL came in the way and stole me on this project. Some interesting things that you'll find out eventually down the line. But knocking out that uh, that uh, pile of shame, which hopefully I gotta get as much done before December when the Gene Steeler Custodes box comes out. And so, as for these models, I'm gonna take out the base from it, but... So these are elites. Very irritating elites. But... There are redder skin, some things work, some things didn't. The hair, it looks good, but it took too long. The metal, finally, I've been just sucking with my metals lately. The metals look good, the runes look good because of the uh, Vallejo paints. Um, Overall, I'm going to give them a solid 8 out of 10. I wasn't going to bother with the eyes, painting the eyes. just wasn't going to bother. Uh, the metals look good, the flesh is pretty good. The shadow and stuff is very clear and obvious. They are clearly red. Uh, their beards are and hair is noticeable and distinct mm, yeah the models are done well they look okay eight out of ten uh, the only thing is though the beards the color of the beards kind of meshes with the flesh a little because the flesh is reddened because of the oil paint I used and so normally uh, their skin would be much whiter whiter in comparison so the beard would be more distinct mm. But, oh well, I, maybe if their skin was a little lighter, it would be more of a contrast to the beard. But, oh well, uh, these are elites. Uh, they're fine being, like, noticeably physically different since these suckers are one of the most irritating tanks. One thing about Age of Sigmar, it's definitely the more balanced and fun game. But there's there are some gimmicks, and these guys are absolute scumbags. Four up armor save and four up feel no pains. What the crap? <laughs> Alright, and yeah, with characters, for those of you who actually know the army. Alright, so like the video if you like the video, comment if you want to comment, share it if you want to share it. Uh, more to come soon, subscribe for more, and uh, you'll see me soon. Bye.